Number eight, Christopher Gattis. A Virginia youth pastor was charged with triple murder in 2017 following the Thanksgiving slaying of his wife, stepdaughter, and the latter's boyfriend. The four of them lived together in the same home in Chester, but 58-year-old pastor Christopher Gattis didn't want the couple named as Candice Coons, Andrew Bethorn, staying for long. His reluctance led to multiple arguments between him and the pair, both in their 30s. The man's wife, 58-year-old Jeanette, had become so concerned that Gattis, who worked at Grace Lutheran Church, would violently lash out that she'd asked his nephew to hide a gun for fear that he might use it against them. Then on Thanksgiving night as the family was playing a board game, Gattis walked into the kitchen and opened fire on them. The two women were shot in the house while Bethorn was gunned down in the front yard. Following his arrest, Gattis told the police, they all came after me, in spite of the fact that all three of the victims had died of gunshot wounds to the back. Gattis eventually pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to 58 years in prison. Number 7. Travis Clark On September 30th of 2020, a passerby noticed that the lights in the St. Peter's and Paul Roman Catholic Church in Pearl River, Louisiana were still on after hours. The witness approached the church and saw that the priest, identified as Travis Clark, was half naked on the altar having relations with two women clad in corsets and high heels. They were later named as dominatrices Mindy Lynn Dixon and Melissa Cameron Cheng, aged 41 and 28 respectively. The trio were recording the scene with a cell phone and tripod mounted camera. Law enforcement were called to the church and arrested Clark along with the two dominatrices on charges of obscenity as the acts in which they'd engaged had occurred in a place open to the public view. Aside from the recording devices, the police confiscated adult toys and stage lights from the scene. Further investigation revealed that Dixon had announced the upcoming role-playing rendezvous on social media. The woman from Kent, Washington, posted that she was traveling to the New Orleans area to defile a house of God with another dominatrix. Clark was suspended from the archdiocese following his arrest and a Vatican-headed probe was launched in the aftermath. The trio was bonded out and their charges were eventually changed to institutional vandalism, a felony, in March of 2021. If convicted, the trio faced up to two years in prison with or without hard labor and a fine of not more than $1,000 or both. Number 6. Joseph McLoon A former pastor at St. Joseph Parish in Downington, Pennsylvania, pleaded guilty in October of 2021 to two charges of mismanaging money. 58-year-old Joseph McLoon's illegal activity had started in the late fall of 2011 when, during his first All Souls holiday as pastor of the church, he began depositing donations into an account named St. Joseph's Activity Account. It was off the parish's books and hence not subjected to the review of the archdiocese or its financial council, meaning that McLoon had free reign over monetary contributions from weddings, funerals, second collections and other sources. Over the course of seven years, he stole nearly $100,000 and used the funds for personal interests. They included luxury accommodations, travel and dining. Even though he'd officially taken a vow of celibacy, McLoon spent a portion of the funds on men whom he met through various dating apps and with whom he was having intimate relationships. He made 10 deposits in 2018 to an inmate at a New York correctional facility with whom he had become acquainted on Grindr. McLoon had made payments totaling $1,720 in previous years to other men that he connected with on the app. His unchecked spending was eventually discovered by the authorities and he was arrested in 2019. Following his guilty plea, he was sentenced to five years of probation in order to pay over $30,000 in restitution, in addition to writing apology letters and performing hundreds of hours of community service. Number 5. Mariam Mbula London woman Mariam Mbula was a pastor at the Salvation Proclaimers Anointed Church, also known as SPAC Nation, founded by Toby Adiboyega in 2008. In the late 2010s, the church was praised by the media, law enforcement and local government for helping young people abandon gangs and turn to faith. The church enjoyed some success by using ex-gang members to show their churchgoers 
the consequences of a criminal lifestyle, it attracted younger members through music such as its Hope Dealers rap group and by promoting a designer aesthetic. It involved its pastors donning designer clothing and accessories, living in luxurious homes or driving around in high-end vehicles, some of which had the word pastor stylized on their license plates. SPAC Nation steadily grew in popularity and influence with one of its pastors, Enrique Uadai, listed as one of London's most influential people by the Evening Standard. In October of 2019, Mbula had also particularly captivated the public through her story about turning her life around after being jailed for fraud in her 20s while she was pregnant. When the Metropolitan Police started investigating the church in November of 2019, they discovered that SPAC Nation operated like a cult by pressuring vulnerable young people into donating everything they had to the church. They were asked to take out loans, donate blood, and make all matter of personal sacrifices in order to provide seed for the church, an internal phrase which meant raising money for it. I don't care what you guys have to do to raise your seed, you're going to raise it. Church founder Adi Boyega was quoted as saying at one point, there were also allegations of teenagers being pressured into having relations with older church members as well as them being left vulnerable for exploitation and abuse at the safe houses ran by SPAC Nation. Further investigation into Imbula revealed that the pastor, then in her early 30s, had at least 13 convictions for 34 offenses, 27 of which were for fraud and dishonesty. She'd been jailed in the UK, Belgium, and Spain, while also being accused of heading a criminal gang in Italy, which targeted boutiques through debit card scams. Testimonies from her many victims and a deeper examination of Mbula's criminal activity were part of a BBC Three documentary called Catch Her If You Can. As of June 2020, SPAC Nation was forced to shut down after being found insolvent, but the investigation into its nefarious affairs continued. Number 4. John Bernard Fight On April the 16th of 1960, Texas school teacher and beauty queen Irene Garza disappeared after last being seen heading to confession at a church in McAllen. Following a massive volunteer search, the 26-year-old's body was discovered five days later in a canal of the Rio Grande Valley. She'd been beaten, abused while unconscious and strangled to death. The ensuing investigation was complicated by the fact that most of the evidence from her body had been washed away in the canal. Father John Bernard Fight, aged 27, eventually became a suspect in Gaza's violent killing, as he'd been the last person to have seen her while taking her confession. Fellow priests had noticed scratch marks on his arms after midnight mass, and also noted the irregularity of him taking the young woman's confession in the church rectory. Other attendees claimed that his confession line had moved slowly on the night as he'd been in and out of the sanctuary. Fight blamed his absence on breaking his glasses and explained the scratches by claiming he'd forgotten his keys and had to climb to the second floor of his house. McCallum police deemed that he'd passed the polygraph, but the results were later deemed inconclusive. Fight subsequently confessed to the killing while at a monastery in Missouri but a monk named Dale Takeni initially didn't disclose the information. In the 1970s, Fight left the priesthood and moved to Arizona, got married and had three children. The investigation into Gaza's death stagnated for decades, but was reopened in 2014. A re-examination of the evidence led to 83-year-old Fight's arrest in Scottsdale, Arizona in February of 2016. Takeni testified against him in the trial that followed and the former priest who at the time suffered from kidney and bladder cancer, was ultimately convicted of Gaza's murder. Prosecutors asked for a 57-year sentence, symbolic of how much time had passed since her death. Fight was eventually given life in prison and on February the 12th of 2020, passed away from natural causes. Number 3. Kenneth Allen Keith Kentucky couple Michael and Angela Hockensmith, both in their 30s, were gunned down at their pawn shop in Danville. On the morning of September the 20th of 2013, killed alongside them was 60-year-old gold dealer Daniel Smith, a regular at the ABC Gold Games and More Business they co-owned. 
The couple's children were inside the store, but they were unharmed and called 911 after the intruder had fled. The Hockensmith's son witnessed the shooting and described the gunman as being heavyset and wearing a fake beard. Within a few days, police established 48-year-old Kenneth Allen Keith, a pastor at a local church. As a person of interest in the triple murder, Keith used to own part of the pawn shop and Michael was his store manager before the couple became partners with the other co-owner. The pastor operated another gold business and reportedly held a grudge against the Hawk and Smiths for choosing to sell to Smith over him. Keith's alibi of having gone to the Veterans Affairs Hospital at the time of the murders was swiftly dismantled, while a briefcase carrying roughly $40,000 taken from Smith during the incident was also traced back to him. His search history included how to attach fake beards, how to bury money with GPS coordinates, and background checks on the victims. Keith initially maintained his innocence, but a few months before his trial, in August of 2017, pleaded guilty to the triple murder for which he was sentenced to life in prison. Today's topic was requested by Butterfly39. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. James Flanders in October of 2011, Florida woman Marie Carlson was reported missing after she'd sent loved ones a mysterious message claiming she was leaving Fort Walton Beach. Her car was subsequently located at the airport, but there was no indication that she'd boarded a flight. Prior to her disappearance, 37-year-old Carlson had had a newborn daughter with James Flanders. She was in a polygamous relationship with the man, a pastor at Calvary Emerald Coast Church, and his wife, Tanya. The trio had been living together and, upon learning about the secret arrangement, law enforcement interviewed Flanders as a person of interest. He claimed to have left the house on the evening of October the 17th, maintaining that Carlson was already gone by the time he'd returned. Tanya had reportedly been out with the newborn around the same period. Flanders' story was regarded as suspicious because Carlson still had money in her bank account and her belongings were in the home. There was no body, however, and the evidence was insufficient for charges to be brought against the pastor. Roughly three months after Carlson's disappearance, he moved to Arizona with Tanya and the baby, subsequently filing for termination of the mother's parental rights. A break in the case came after it had gained national attention from being featured on the television show Cold Justice. In April of 2015, Carlson was arrested and brought back to Florida on second-degree murder charges. He eventually confessed to killing Carlson, which he claimed was an accident in favor of the lighter manslaughter charge. Flanders maintained that he'd been arguing with her over how to raise their daughter, but as tensions escalated, he bear-hugged the woman and didn't let go until she stopped breathing. Flanders led the police to the body, which he'd buried in his backyard. In July of 2016, he was given the maximum prison sentence of 15 years. Number 1. Clarence Smith Jr. In 2020, an investigation into a charity operation headed by a Chicago minister revealed that he'd grossly misused funds meant to fuel a food program for underprivileged children and adults. 45-year-old Reverend Clarence Smith Jr. of the New Life Impact Church was a sponsor of the Child and Adult Care Food Program. Court documents indicated that the church's role was to provide nutritious snacks and meals to children, the elderly, and those with disabilities, for which the organization would be reimbursed by the state of Illinois. Investigators found that starting from October of 2015, Smith had begun over-reporting the number of people his church had helped, billing the state for $1 million, which was paid in two checks the following year. The Reverend deposited the money into the church's account and then wrote checks or withdrew cash for expenses that had nothing to do with the food program or other charity endeavors. They included $142,000 which Smith used to buy a 2015 Bentley Flying Spur luxury sedan for himself. He then tried to cover up his illicit spending by telling the Illinois Board of Education that the records of the people his church had presumably helped had been destroyed in a flood. As of the latest information available on the matter, Smith pleaded not guilty to four counts of fraud in the U.S. District Court. Thanks for watching. Which concept would you want to know the truth about? Life after death or what happens inside a black hole? Let us know in the comment section below.